Hi, good evening everyone. And uh, my name is Faiz. We're back again for another webinar session. And this time we have the lovely, uh, I call it Brel, or you know, uh, in the studio, our home studio. Uh, how are you doing, Brel? I'm great. I hope you're doing good too. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I'm doing great, you know. Uh, just wondering, you know, because uh, I think uh, now it's eight o'clock and uh, I didn't, I forgot to ask you whether you had any your dinner, you know. Yes, I, ha I had early dinner. I need to be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's good, that's good. Okay, so I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, Brel is the rising star and, you know, she's getting a lot of attention and we're we're so happy to have here, uh, to have her here with us uh, tonight. And, uh, you know, uh, we like to sort of pick her brains because, you know, it's, uh, I think she's an amazing person and a lot of people like to know uh, more about uh, Brel. And uh, maybe uh, you can start by, you know, uh, sharing uh, with us a bit about who uh, Brel is. Right. Thank you for the brief introduction, Faiz. Uh, yes. So my name is Brelvin Rajkor. I was um, uh, born in Kuantan, raised in Kuching, and uh, I'm yes. currently working as a satellite controller in Myasat Satellite Systems mm -hmm. and also pursuing my uh, postgraduate uh, in MSc Aerospace Engineering under USM. Okay. And uh, I also am a passionate diver. Oh, okay, that's great. Yeah, I'm a diver that's too. A... Oh, good to know. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, just an, I'm just an open water diver though. Okay, same, same. I just only done a couple of dives. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, good, good experience. You can easily straight away uh, jump into uh, going to space, right? For the uh, EVA, right? Okay, anyway, there you are. Plus point. Yeah, that's right. Always be prepared. <laughs> and um, yeah, the and also, uh, I'm a national point of contact for Space Generation Advisory Council, so that's a little bit about me. Yes. Oh, yeah. That, that one strikes out the most when, when people uh, find you or, you know, in Google search is that national point of contact for the Space Generation uh, Advisory Council. And, you know, uh, okay, maybe you like to, uh, you know, tell people uh, where you work because it's very important, right, uh, to, mm -hmm. to your bosses, right? Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Right, so uh, I work as a satellite controller in Myasat Satellite Systems. Uh, it's yeah. been two years and it is mm -hmm. located in uh, Cyberjaya. Okay. Oh, okay, hang on. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I just have my uh, my daughter here with me. Okay, anyway, uh, yeah, I've, I've been to Myasat and uh, actually I wanted to share with uh, to with you that, you know, uh, I actually went for the Myasat 3 launch uh, with... Uh, uh, your company and I think they took good care of us. So I like to say thank you, Masat. You know, again, if uh, you don't know it, and okay, maybe uh, what is your current role uh, in Masat? My current role, uh, I work as a satellite controller in the satellite operation okay. center. Okay, maybe you can elaborate more when you say satellite controller. People are like, okay, how does she control the satellite thingy? You know. You know when <laughs> I when I first heard the term, okay, I asked myself. Yeah. Is it really regarding controlling satellites or something else? Okay, because yeah. I never had experience meeting someone working in that role okay, because it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a niche industry and there are not yeah. any jobs like that out there. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so one of the things we do is we literally control the satellites, but those okay. are, uh, we control the communication ones and okay, also, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll okay. more about the satellites <laughs> later. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you know, when when people think about uh satellite controller, the first thing that comes to my mind, this is my imagination, is like mm -hmm. in the movies, right? With all those big screens and you know those uh panels. Is it something like that where, where your office where you work? Because you know, I think that it looks like the picture that you you sent us. Is it, is it something like that? You know. Uh, that is indeed uh where I work in. Oh, okay. All right. That's the the office. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. We are, you know yeah, this. Uh, I think uh. It's a very uh, uh, relaxed environment, so I think we can share. Uh, we won't uh, uh, breach any uh, uh, trade secrets from Myasat. Okay, Myasat, don't worry. Uh, no, this is uh, Brel. Is uh, you know she's very happy to be here. You're happy to be here, right, Brel? Indeed, uh, it's a pleasure okay. actually. Thank you for having okay. me. Let's 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 talk about something more uh, less sensitive than. Uh, how about um, we go into uh, you know uh, a lot of people may not know this about the. Uh, Space Generation Advisory, mm -hmm. Advisory Council, well, it's a mouthful, right? And it sounds so glamorous, but, you know, uh, can you explain uh, to, to people who don't know, uh, to me especially, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what is it all about? You know, it, it sounds so fancy, right? Fancy, I see, okay. Yeah. So, uh, as Space Generation Advisory Council, or the abbreviation is the SGAC, you know, okay. uh, because to be easy to pronounce. Oh, thank um, God, okay. 
Yeah, it's a it's a, a non-government, a non-profit organization that that mm. has like fifteen thousand members currently, both okay. the active and also the uh, alumni as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it, it works closely with the United Nations and the Outer okay. Space Affairs. Uh, for young professionals and like students in academia who are basically just space enthusiasts. So you oh, don't okay. actually have to be, yeah, you don't have to be uh, somebody who is working in STEM. You don't you don't necessarily need to be like a space propulsion engineer to okay, be okay. in CAC. You can okay. be a, a lawyer who just, a, you know, happen to be interested in space. You can join. Okay. All right. But there is, is, is limit is from... That, is that, is that, I was just going to ask you, right, my mind. <laughs> Is there like an age limit? You know, I, I, I Sunny, I feel like I want, I, I want to be part of this SGAC. It sounds so, so fancy, right? Is there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. So what is? The age limit is from uh, eighteen until thirty-five. Oh, okay. I just fit mm -hmm. right in the. the no, nah, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so uh, to all your viewers out there, uh, if you are between eighteen to thirty-five and you're really interested in space, you can be a lawyer. Uh, you don't have to be anybody in the uh, STEM industry. Uh, please, you know, uh, sign up there. The, the URL is right there, spacegeneration.org. And, you know, you can follow um, Brel's uh, footstep, you know, and uh, make some contribution towards the space industry. And, uh, you know, the SGAC, uh, from what I, I read from their website, they, has a, they have a lot of uh, uh, branches and uh, areas. And uh, which one is uh, that you are, you're working under, you know, because I, I get curious too, like, wow, this uh, looks so complex, right? Maybe you can right. explain a bit. Yeah. That is a good question. So uh, they have like uh, uh, they have few project groups that uh, mm -hmm. anyone who is interested or eligible they can apply to. Like for example, mm -hmm. the small satellites, the space safety mm -hmm. and sustainability, or like mm -hmm. cybersecurity in space, for example. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But for me, I'm not in any particular project groups as okay. yet. I am okay. the national point of contact for Malaysia. Okay. So, so with when me, you. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, carry on, carry on, please. Yeah, so with me currently on board uh, is uh, Marco, who I will be working closely with. Um, Marco was appointed last uh, August. So, yeah, okay. uh, he's in the other national point of contact for Malaysia. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. great. We've got to get Marco on the show. You didn't, uh, okay, that's amazing. And, uh, you know, so when you say national point of contact, uh, again, you know, what mm -hmm. does that entail or what people would probably want to know? Uh, know right. what, what, your responsibility you know uh, yeah. yeah so basically as the word says point of contact so basically okay, I bring yeah. students young professionals or people yeah. together and i uh, put it out there like hey there is an event going on you know let us uh, yeah, uh, right? let us come together so, mm -hmm. so, so let's just uh, put it this way uh, one of the activities that are going on right now for mm -hmm. sgac is the online webinars okay, oh, okay so, all right actually sgac malaysia has a group where i blast the information for the members uh -huh. all so right to be a member it's completely free you don't have to worry about any uh, payment fee sign up so, so i will i will i will usually you blast can hear the can, right mm -hmm. huh? sorry to interrupt you uh, okay let me see uh space generation okay hang on we just yeah. uh, take a, a short break here i'll be back Oh, okay, <laughs> and we're back. Sorry, yes. Uh, I had a like a we have a stray cat in the house, so you know it's uh it's probably trying to get out. No, it's trying to disturb. Uh, disturb uh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, we were talking about SJC there. You know, so uh, yeah. are you trying to say that uh, you know, I'm just curious on top of my head. Uh, so if I I just uh, register online, is there any like a uh, criteria that I need to fit, or you know, uh, do I quickly get into a project? Uh, you know, or, or what what projects do you do you work on in in terms of like that? Oh. To be a member, all you have to uh -huh. do is go to the website, click uh -huh. uh, join, and you can just sign uh -huh. up. You will already have a profile, and yeah, it's it's as simple oh. as that. Okay, so there's no no fees or anything like that. Nope, absolutely no okay. fees. Okay. All right, so you know, uh, you know, I do encourage everyone. Uh, when you fit the criteria, eighteen to thirty-five, you're interested, you know, in the development of space, uh, in general, uh, please uh, do contact Brel as well because she she is the national point of contact, right? So she and Marco, uh, you know, they'll be probably uh, guide you or provide more information on the stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and uh, we, we're coming up to some of the uh, uh, question. maybe I wanted to ask about uh, SGAC's role in uh, the World Space Week, you know, uh, because, you know, we are now celebrating, I forgot, I'll just share, you know, World Space Week, you can see down on the ticker, right? 
for uh, yep. October 4 to 10, you know. So what is their their role in uh, World Space Week? Yes, they have many, many webinars currently because uh, it, it's tough times now okay. <laughs> because of the COVID-19. <laughs> so um, okay. there's the IAC Congress and then there are so many webinars from so many different countries. And mm -hmm. it's available actually, they, they would blast on their social medias, on their mm -hmm. Twitter, on their Instagram, on the current available webinars. So mm -hmm. anyone can join. Actually, okay. um, just to put it out here, uh -huh. uh, okay. I, I, I found out about SGAC when I went to a conference in Dubai uh -huh. because okay. everyone there had something in common. They were at okay, right. or, or SGAC. And then I was you know, thinking, okay, first, I was thinking to myself, what are all these abbreviations uh, standing for? Okay, and then, okay. Uh, why are there no Malaysians on that platform? Like, yeah, where okay. are our people? So, okay. so I came back home, I, I read about it, I read about how to mm -hmm. apply, and then um, I joined one of the webinars with the mm -hmm. SJC alumni, and they explained mm -hmm. to me on how I can be a part of the NPOC in my country. And okay. that's that quite motivated me to actually okay. sign up for the NPOC, uh, to actually apply for the NPOC position. Okay. Mm. So how have you personally uh, uh, benefited? Have you grown, you think, in terms of exposure or, you know, uh, the skill set that you learn, you know? How, how has that affected your life? Or, nah, you know, how, how, how has it been since uh, you became uh, being I, appointed I, NPOC? I don't think it's a secret that I'm a bit of a nerd. So that <laughs> was... Oh, really? Okay. I couldn't see that, you know, talking to you right now. Okay, all right. Okay. There were, there were like free online courses for like rocket and space propulsion. I, I just signed up. Okay. And space law, actually. So I would say, you know, let, let's uh, learn more about this thing. Like, okay. it, it's not uh, easily available, you know. And I was okay. like, okay, since uh, I am interested, why not? And they were mostly organized by the SGAC uh, members and alumni mm -hmm. at that point of time. So, so how has that changed you? You know, the old Braille compared to the new Braille after being uh, appointed. That, that's what I really want to know, actually. You know, you, you know, can you share that? You know, that, that's that's important to me. I want, I want to know how you you grown. As very, then, yeah, as a very shy <laughs> person, I think um, despite uh, or I would say you know it's a learning curve, uh, okay, getting okay. more information online. I think I, I get more friends online as well. We okay. can share information through our LinkedIn or social media. It's more mm -hmm. of a keeping in touch, lah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you, you know why? Because you know, sometimes for me, I, I'm already uh, very uh, uh, much older now, and you know, I'm only figuring out life, you know. And I feel like, oh my god, so late. And you know, I see somebody young like you, and oh, you got it, like you know, figure out so early. So you know, I wanted to know which step did I miss, you know. So you know, I want to know how it has changed your effect to you. That's all, you know. And you know, yeah. all right, I understand you are. Uh, you know, a uh, uh, private person in a sense, but you know, uh, just okay, let's just move on to, to the next uh, segment. I think uh, this is what we're all here. Uh, you want to present to us uh, something uh, that has to do with uh, the World Space Week uh, team, which is okay. Satellites in Good Life. And you work for Miasat, and uh, we, we love Miasat. And you know, uh, we want uh, uh, to hear more about you. And okay, maybe you can, uh, you can bring up uh, your presentation for today, the, yes. your main showcase. Yeah. Just gonna share my slide. Yeah, take your time, no worries. <clears throat> can, can you see my slides? Okay, oh yes, I have you coming in and there. Okay, you can, uh, oh, okay. I can see it now, satellites and its applications. Okay, please, Braille, uh, you know, educate us. I am, I'm, you know, looking <laughs> forward <Okay>. to this. <laughs> all right, so um, first of all, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, it's very nice to meet you all, virtually. <laughs> so uh, today I will be presenting on satellites and its applications. Uh, not very technical, don't worry. I would just like to introduce to the public, uh, sorry, to the public on what satellites do and how it actually impacts us in our daily lives. Because I believe that satellites indeed have played an uh, enormous role in improving the, the state of the world that we are currently living in and it will continue doing so. Right. Okay. Yeah, so as mentioned Hi, earlier, sorry? Oh, sorry, I just think I can see you now. All right, okay, carry on, sorry. Okay, so about myself, uh, I, mm -hmm. I was an electrical engineering graduate from uh, University of Tahan National Malaysia or NDUM, National Defense University of Malaysia. I graduated in 2018. Mm -hmm. 
I'm currently pursuing my Master of Science in Aerospace Engineering in USM. Uh, I work as a satellite controller in Miasat. Um, I'm also the national point of contact of Malaysia under SGAC and a PADI certified open water diver. Okay. Hmm. And uh, basically on the picture on the right, you can see this is uh, where I work. Okay. So that's the satellite room I was envisioning. Okay. Yes. Okay. When you visited Miasat, did you visit this lovely room? Oh, I have very short memory. Uh, no, I think uh, I, I don't remember seeing this room. <laughs> okay, okay, anyway. No. But I have an invitation from you right now. Definitely. Uh, okay, I, okay. I, hold, I hold on to your promise. Okay, okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so when, when, when Faiz uh, um, invited me on the platform, I couldn't have thought of a better topic for the World Space Week. Uh, this year because the theme itself was satellites improve lives so mm -hmm. which is why I chose to present this topic in the first place you know like satellites and its applications so right. what is a satellite exactly right so there are basically two different types one is the uh, artificial and one is a natural so by definition it is an object that is orbiting another object so it's either a moon a planet or a machine that uh, orbits a planet or a star okay for example a natural satellite would be the earth because it is orbiting the sun so like likewise the moon is orbiting the earth right so the moon is the earth's natural satellite That's so great. um yeah so what is artificial satellite artificial ones are the ones that are made by human beings or um anything that is not natural in a sense so uh uh there are currently thousands of artificial satellites that are orbiting the earth and in 1957, the first communication... Would it be too, too hard to ask uh, the exact number? Because I think it's been calculated, right? The, the number of satellites. What is the ballpark figure now that's orbiting? Uh, it, would, it would be thousands oh, okay. and thousands. Because, oh, okay, right. Uh, right, that's actually a very good question because there are uh, active and uh, non-active satellites. So I, yeah. I personally do not know the exact number. Oh, okay. okay, don't worry. Yeah. The viewers, the first one to Google it and uh, just post on the comments, please. Okay, yeah, please, please carry on. We, okay. will be, we, we will be, you know, interested to know, all right? Since they are at home, they can do that stuff. All right, carry on. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so uh, in 1957, the first communication form of uh, artificial satellite was the Sputnik 1, the, which was uh, launched by the Soviet Union. And then uh, maybe some of you have heard of Laika, the first dog that went into space. So that was launched by Sputnik 2. Just, you know, putting an interesting fact there. So, <laughs> okay. um, so since, the, since the launch of the first, uh, first artificial satellite, you know, the mm -hmm. space technology has been evolving rapidly to contribute to our daily lives. And it has been uh, uh, giving new information in very many innovative ways. All right. Moving on. Right, so these are the types of satellite orbits. So they are not okay. just there rotating like the image here. Um, I mean, this is not the scale, not in 3D. So okay. explaining this one here, uh, low Earth orbit. So anything between uh, 500 kilometers to 2000 will fall in this category, or as we uh, call it, LEO. And then okay. uh, a lot of uh, applications used by navigation or observation and satellites and communications as well are, are in this orbit and then mm -hmm. medium earth orbit is from uh, as you can see you know after leo there's neo and then there's geo so neo is like the middle one here okay. it's from 5000 kilometers to 15000 kilometers so okay. one of the uh, one of the examples of satellites in this region are o3b communication satellites Right. And uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention earlier. I'm sorry. The period taken or the hours taken by a uh, low Earth orbit to complete a rotation around the Earth will be 1.6 to 2.2 hours. And okay. the, the medium Earth orbit will take about 3.4 to 8.6. Okay. And last but not least, my most favorite orbit is uh, the geosynchronous. <laughs> uh, my, my, my favorite is the Leo because uh, Inter international space station uh, orbits in the Leo, right? Am yes, I right? Exactly. Orbits there, yeah. yeah. About 420 kilometers from Earth. So, you know, okay, my favorite is Leo. You have a Geo. Okay, carry on with Geo. Okay, so <laughs> Geo, uh, geosynchronous Earth orbit, uh, it, uh, it is 35,786 kilometers to be exact. And the, okay. it takes about 24 hours to complete a uh, rotation. That means uh, it equals to one day of rotation around the Earth. 
Uh, sorry, uh, just what I understand is Geo is basically is just stuck exactly at the same spot, right? Because, you know, uh, that's why uh, you, it, that's why we have with Geo so that, you know, Miasa launches is there, it's stuck at that position and, you know, it, it doesn't really move away from the people from the point, yeah, right? It is more so like you, the satellite will be constantly, it is supposed to be pointing at the ground station at all times, you know, so that okay. we, the receivers will receive signal at, at, at all times. I mean, that's, that's the main point of the uh, yeah. Geo satellite to the first place. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's why it's, it's the most furthest, right? You know, I, this is what I learned from the Miasat guys for last time. Yes, for communication, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Just carry on. No, no worries. You may interrupt me anytime. Oh, okay. uh, so, uh, the moon, you see, if the geosynchronous Earth orbit is about 35,000 kilometers, the moon is further than that. It's 385,000 kilometers from Earth. And, okay. um, yeah, as uh, you've mentioned earlier, the International Space Station is around 330 to 400 kilometers from Earth. Okay. It's one of the labs outside of our... Yeah, I think uh, in a few years' time, uh, I'm sure, uh, Brel, you'll be, uh, you know, uh, up there as an astronaut. I, I think oh, in the nearest time. Mark my words. Dream to be there. <laughs> Definitely, you will, you will. I believe so. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. carry on. Right, so... um. Yeah, just, just to put it up here, uh, previously I was asked whether, you know, the first Malaysian astronaut, um, was he launched to the moon? He was not launched to the moon, he went to the International Space Station to study okay. cancer cell research. So, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Right, so as mentioned earlier, EO, um, observation, Earth observational satellites will be... Um, involved in agriculture and weather forecasting because the, the satellites also provide us with information mm -hmm. regarding wildfires, volcanoes, you know, um, mm -hmm. sea levels, ice levels. Mm -hmm. So what the scientists would do with all this data is that mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. have to, you know, predict and uh, predict climate change and then come up ways to mitigate them. Okay. Right. So, right. This is also a uh, medium and orbit the navigation. Mm -hmm. As many of the viewers may already know, you know, you, you use your GPS or, you know, Google Maps or this one ways to get from one place to another. So have you guys actually thought about how these uh, satellites, uh, sorry, how these apps actually bring you from one place to another? I myself didn't know. <laughs> okay. Right? So, uh, yeah, actually, your phone is actually a receiver for all these, uh, for these navigation apps. And... Um, Thank you for the satellite the satellite signals that you're receiving. You you are actually able to navigate yourself from one place to another. You know, like if some of you have your Garmin watches, so yeah, mm -hmm. that's how it works as well. So um, it's used for precise location and also uh, search and rescue communications, right? Oh, so um, mm -hmm. so the constellation of communication satellites in this medium or orbits consists of the GPS, which mm -hmm. stands for global positioning system like you know how you put up your location the gps yeah. right there yeah so it's actually communicating with the satellites up there how amazing is that yeah and we can and ask the viewers if they know how many satellites uh, make up of the gps system right yeah we can ask them or maybe make it like a fun quiz because uh, we have a quiz coming up too and you know this is one right. of the questions so this is like homework for you guys you know <laughs> okay, okay, man. So, uh, GPS was initially introduced by the uh, United States military in the 1970s and then only was commercialized, you know, and now we are using it, well, uh, sorry, we are using it globally. And then yeah. Galileo is used by the European, uh, sorry, introduced by the Europeans and then Beidou by China. And then we also have um, QZSS, quasi Zeni Satellite Systems by uh, Japan and also mm -hmm. uh, GLONASS by uh, Russian. Okay, I only thought it was GPS and GLONASS. I didn't know, you know, we have, uh, Galileo is uh, operational now, you know. I, when I was learning it, it's just like, wow, okay, good, good to know. All right. Yeah, it, even India has uh, INS, IRNS as well, just to put it here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, oh, your favorite. <laughs> Two synchronous <laughs> orbit. So, most communication satellites are fixed in this position, I'm uh, sorry, fixed in geosynchronous Earth, Earth orbit because it's the best spot for communication signals because mm -hmm. as mentioned earlier, the rate of the rotation of the uh, satellite with respect to Earth is uh, constant, Okay. right? Uh -huh. And what are the 
real life applications used in Malaysia for this system is Astro. We are okay. using it for Astro communication. I put a banner out there. Miasa, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, in 1965, the first uh, first communication satellite was the Intercept One, built mm -hmm. by the uh, Space and Communications Group of Hughes Aircraft Company, first communi commercial uh, geo satellite. And in Malaysia, Miasa uh -huh. operates a fleet of geo satellites. So I will explain further later on in the slides on how many satellites are operational, how many we are working on, and all that later on in the slides. All right. Right. So a typical satellite link would look like this. So you must be uh -huh. wondering uh, how our phones or how the receivers on Earth actually communicate with the satellites in space. So uh, a satellite would typically have an antenna and then it will communicate with the ground antenna. Uh -huh. And the ground antenna will send signal, the satellite will receive, the satellite will send signal, the ground will receive. So it's a two-way process. And okay. the solar panels are very important to provide power the satellites. Mm -hmm. So this is a ground antenna. Is it, what is it called? The ground base stations or something like that? Something not what is it? What's the exact term for it? The ground base station would be the whole station, but the oh, okay. antenna just called antennas. Ground antennas. Oh, okay. Oh, not, nothing too scientific, eh? just antennas. All right, okay, that's cool. Yeah. So uh Okay, wow, this is a nice slide you have here, very colorful. Okay, carry yeah. on. This is a typical spacecraft architecture. I will be showing here uh, the architecture for how, actually this architecture shows how the systems integrate with each other to you know, give us a proper uh, operation. Like we have propulsion system, telemetry, attitude control, commanding, uh, the, for the uh, communication part, we have a down converter, pre-amplifier, filter, everything. These are all on board the spacecrafts and they mm -hmm. get their power from the solar arrays. The solar arrays are pointed towards the sun at all times. So, mm -hmm. so that's why they get the power from the, okay. the sun. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, yeah, and the earth stations as uh, shown earlier here, this is just a... Uh, open it's like an open part of a satellite so there will right. be a link and a downlink so anything that is being transmitted from the ground is an uplink anything that is being the signals that are being received at the ground stations are usually called as downlink all right mm. all right so types of communication satellite uh, all right i can see your face again. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Shown in this okay. picture. Yeah. Shown in this picture here is a typical uh, configuration of a Boeing satellite of a spin mm -hmm. stabilized satellite. This is where a satellite with a with a body that rotates to provide a gyroscopic stabilization of attitude. Okay, not going too technical into this. This mm -hmm. is, you can imagine a top or a gassing in Malay that we call oh. it, right? It will it will, okay. it will work in that manner in a vertical axis. So that's how uh, the antenna will be constantly point to the Earth because it's a geocommunication satellite. So it will be pointed mm -hmm. at all times to the Earth. While the body at a single point of time, it will receive uh, one third of the sunlight. So that is why it needs to constantly rotate for I hour. See. Hmm. Okay. Learning a lot. Huh? Too much already. Lah. I, never, I haven't done homework for a long time. Oh no! <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, some of the uh, parts are the uh, antenna, the uh, control thruster, propellant tanks, uh, th yeah, solar cells, battery packs, and um, thermal radiator. Okay, just to <laughs> briefly explain. And moving on. Yeah. Types of communication satellites are. Uh, besides a uh, spin stabilized satellite is a three axis stabilized satellite so i think this one most of you would have seen you know usually a satellite would have a body and a wing uh, uh, this yes, is yes. The, the common satellites nowadays so it's it, it, the technique to maintain a satellite um, in the same orientation relative to the earth at all times because this is located at geo so mm -hmm. the body of the satellite does not rotate 
I see. Okay, because if it does, then uh, because uh, if it does, then we, we will lose the connection. <laughs> it needs to be good at all times. Right? Yeah, that's a, uh, that, that, that part is very good uh, for, for the viewers to know. Okay. Mm. Um, so uh, we have the KU band antenna, C band antenna. This, the, what are these bands? These are just uh, frequency signals, different type of frequency signals available. And uh, omni antenna for telemetry and command, and uh, most importantly, solar panels. So is it right? Uh, because you know, uh, last island the KU band is where we, they send, uh, you know, for our wireless transaction or credit card transaction. Is it is it correct? KU bands for for Miasat three. That's why they were deploying it at the geo synchronous uh, position. Yeah, we we, we do use our satellites for the uh, transactions at the uh, like you mentioned. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm just trying to juggle my my mm -hmm. memory. Okay, carry on. Right. Um, are there any questions from the audience regarding the satellite? Yeah, uh, please uh, comment, and then uh, we will. After this, will be question and answers, and Chigu okay. uh, Brella can uh, you know will be able to <laughs> we'll be able to answer them. Okay, carry on. Sorry, Brad. Okay, no worries. Mm. Please stop me if I'm. Uh, too fast. No, no, it's good, it's good, it's good. Don't worry. Right. So, uh, type of the geo satellite service in Malaysia. So, uh, maybe uh, mostly, uh, I mean, uh, con uh, operated by Miasat uh, satellite systems, and the mm -hmm. fleets of satellites and coverage are shown here on the image below. Yeah. It was, it. was founded. Um, Miasat, uh, is it too small? No, I made a big screen already, so people can oh, see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. all right. Yeah. Miasat was founded in 1992 with maiden launch in 1996 of Miasat 1 and Miasat 2. Fun fact, mm -hmm. Miasat 1 and Miasat 2 are both spin satellite satellites. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, since then it has since, has since launched, operated seven satellites with reaching over 150 countries representing 5.8 billion people globally. So after the Miasat 1 and Miasat 2, all the other satellites look like this. Ah, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so the current operational satellites are Miasat 3, 3A, uh, 3B, and also we are joint venture with Miasat 5, and also mm -hmm. Africa Set A1A. Wow. Hmm. Very well funded, like your organization. Moving on. <laughs> right, okay, so, well, uh, uh, okay. I, I leave this slide. Uh, I can make it slightly smaller. People like to see your. Your face there. Okay, carry on. Okay, so uh, like I've shown uh, earlier, satellites come in various sizes and shapes and depending on their mission, you know, uh, but then most of them have the same thing in common, which is the uh, how it works in general. So they will have the solar panels and the antennas that will play a very big part in the, the operation of the satellites. Oh. And then, uh, you know, just that how just as how satellites orbit the Earth, you know, it provides the necessary links for um, te television, land mapping, surveying. They also provide uh, satellite broadband. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because they actually uh, another another form of wireless broadband used for serving remote and sparsely populated areas. Uh, which we call as pedalaman lah because um, okay. yeah you know the, the uh, s some places are unreachable so one mm -hmm. of the services are satellite internet mm -hmm. which is connect me so these oh. these are communication satellites used to champion national rural broadband connectivity ah. so so, um, Miasat is a sole consumer satellite broadband provider serving under underserved communities in Malaysia so yeah, today, that's a good, we have, good point to prove, yeah. <laughs> today we have more than 70,000 broadband connections, you know, empowering rural communities to be part of the digital economy. So uh, if anyone, you know, is interested to learn more about uh, Connect Me, feel free to see the uh, uh, Miasat's website. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you can search more about Connect Me there. Oh, all right. Hmm. So at least we know, okay, uh, DS, Miasa has a CSR arm and, you know, we're helping uh, underserved communities uh, in uh, remote areas in Malaysia. So these remote areas are, it, it, it's not like uh, isolated in uh, Sabah and Sarawak only, but also in uh, Peninsula here? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. In huh? Peninsula as well. Both Sabah, huh? Sarawak and Peninsula as well. Okay. 
Great. I believe I have come at the, uh, to the end of Oh, this okay. Lecture. Wow. All right. You know, wow. I think <laughs> very deep. You know, I, you know, my, my, I'm, I'm, you know, there's a lot to, there's a, a lot to digest. Lot but, to yeah, digest. Okay. People, yeah, people can, uh, can, uh, can uh, look back and, you know, uh, review these videos and, you know, and, uh, you know, Ooh. this is something that you can, you know, educate yourself and uh, probably uh, be more knowledgeable in terms of uh, how the satellite operates, where its location uh, geosynchronous or lower orbit and all that so a uh, very yeah. brilliant presentation thank you and you know uh, we will take a short break because i think uh, Braille probably needs uh, to catch a breath you know uh, for me i, I just been uh, you know relaxed there <laughs> but thank you very much for that and we'll be back with uh, your questions all right and see you Hi. oh that's too fast okay don't worry uh, all right, uh, this is a segment where we, we come to some of the comments and uh, okay, uh, the first one is, uh, first of all, uh, oh, our, our group members ask, Scouts Malaysia says, be prepared. Thank you very much. And uh, this is a, seems like a serious question from uh, Anand Jude. How do satellites avoid collision with space debris and other satellites? Do the ground team constantly monitor threats or do the satellites have automatic threat avoidance system? Wow. I oh, think wow. I'll like, <laughs> Wow. Very, is, is it too too difficult for first question? Okay. <laughs> maybe no, you, no, can, uh, can, yeah, you can shed yeah. some light. I think, uh, thank you, Ananjit, for that question. So how exactly do satellites avoid collision uh, with space debris? Okay, so if uh, our viewers don't understand what space debris are, it's a, it, it ranges from tiny little objects in space. You know, let's say last time uh, satellites have collided before and then they leave the space junk in space, you know, and then they are still right. orbiting around the Earth. So those are called uh, space debris or space junk. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it can be like a one millimeter or nanometer object. So anything that is not supposed to be in space is a debris. And then uh, also uh, our inactive satellites also uh, also fall in that category. And um, for space agencies, you know, uh, before they launch and all that, they would have to consider orbital trajectories carefully and also for the uh, automatic threat avoidance system is um, when they work closely with uh, the United United States Space Surveillance Network. Oh, wow, so okay. yeah, satellite operators like ourselves will be informed on any conjunction and then we would perform a maneuver to avoid the collision. I see. Wow, that, that, that's uh, well put. Uh, you know, for, for me, I'm a pilot. We have uh, internal, you know, uh, detection where we can avoid each other. So, uh -huh. okay. You, so this, that uh, you were communicating with the air traffic system, uh, air traffic control tower, right? Uh, no, no. It's an aircraft to aircraft because, you know, I think oh, okay. uh, accidents in the past have become, you know, where the air traffic control will give you a conflicting, uh, like it says that there's an aircraft, you go, one will go up, one will go down, and then the control will say go up. So, and there have been accidents in the past. So now we will rely on basically the avoidance within the, uh, the aircraft itself. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, something uh, something different there. Uh. Okay, and it's uh, from Amar Palapai. Okay, he says, uh, what do you like about your job? What do I like about my job? I think um, I would say that because uh, it's very interesting. It's, it's a constant learning journey, I would say. Um, I wouldn't get this uh, knowledge outside. Okay, yes, definitely. I, I think uh, uh, for the people out there also, you know, it's not just uh, being satisfied working a job. It's also, you know, uh, the other things that you do, like uh, serving community, volunteering, I think that, uh, you know, enriches uh, somebody, you know, in, in that sense. So moving on, there's, uh, we have uh, good good info. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And uh, oh, this is Shukran. Hello, folks. Looking good. Thank you, Shukran. Uh, Nerd Adunib. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he's a joker, right? Okay. Hello, Braille. This is your friend, Jai Kumar. Okay, uh, this is the national point of contact for India. Oh, okay, hi, right. Jai Kumar. Oh, welcome. Mm -hmm. we, we, we need to meet up. We have a, you know, a session all together. Hmm. Uh, which part of India is he from? I know, think sure? South India. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. And uh, uh, go oh. bro. Okay, you have a lot of supporters out there. And what is this? Okay, somebody answered our question Thank just you. now. <laughs> okay, we, have to, we have to bet this question. It's correct. 2,666 sites actually currently in Ovid. Wow. 
So there so you I'm go. Assuming these are operational satellites because if you are going to consider the space junk, space debris, it's, it's a lot. Oh, okay. But somebody else also uh, says, uh, I'm going to say active satellites. Okay. Satellites, okay. Okay. So it is, right? And uh, okay. the S scouts again, GNSS, uh, geosynchronous, right? GNSS, no, this uh, is, they, they, they didn't I'm, land, right? Middle of I'm orbit. I'm right? to answer this part. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. Uh, no worries. Uh, because I actually didn't mention. Uh, properly just now. You know how in the medium Earth orbit, I mentioned GPS, Galileo, Beidou, and all that? Okay. Those are actually a constellation under the navigational system. So, global navigation satellite systems. Okay. So, the GNSS. So, no, they are not just synchronous uh, satellites. They are under medium Earth orbit. No. Yes. Yeah, I, I remember that because we were discussing about uh, uh, positioning uh, satellites, right? And... Uh, yeah. Well, where is this question? Well, we have a lot of questions here. Okay. Uh, what is there a difference between uh, a geosynchronous and a geostationary orbit? Wow. It's the same thing. It's geo. It's the same thing. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes. Okay. Just work then. And okay. This one is the correct answer. I know Anand says 24 GPS operational satellites now. For the GPS, there's 24. Good job, Anand. Yeah, you know, you know your stuff. Yes, I would like to add something on this. Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. We go back to Ananda, yeah. Yeah, because uh, when I was doing my final year project in University of Tahan, National Asia, I was under uh, Associate Professor Dr. Syed Farouz. Mm -hmm. So, um, the GNSS part that I was supposed to be working with was GPS. And then at that point of time, I also got to know that there are more than 30 satellites that are launched into orbit for the GPS, but the operational ones are only 24. Mm -hmm. The rest are redundant. Okay. Yeah. So just okay, but I, I, I have one question for you actually because uh, we fly a lot from LA to uh, Taiwan, right? And certain parts of uh, the uh, northern region, I don't know, uh, we will, uh, certain, uh, I say, uh, areas, we will lose our GPS yeah. signal. People say, okay, this this one has been uh, sort of coded or protected. So is, is that true? Because, you know, we will just... <laughs> And then we, we will report it and then, you know, we say that probably the military or somebody is trying to protect uh, that area. Is that true? I don't know. Okay. Um, I wouldn't know much on how the military operation come into play with aircraft systems. But hmm. I can say that probably your uh, transmission is interrupted because of the ionospheric integration, maybe. Because, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, actually... Um, Navigational signals are more prominent to being uh, detected by the uh, the space weather events that will affect our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. No, but this yeah. one they they know they they will tell us you know we have an alert. Okay, we only within this area. So so maybe there's a lot of uh, in, like say ionospheric activity. You, would you say that? Maybe it could oh, be okay. it, uh, ionospheric. Uh, we uh, do affect GPS signals. Yes, but I do not. I really don't know how it works with the special uh, places that you are flying across okay, because okay. Uh, some places uh, when there's um, pilots for example uh, you're mm -hmm. not supposed to fly through them correct so maybe apply for military bases as well uh no no those are you know it's already marked as a danger area so we we uh, we're talking about like middle of nowhere and quite quite close to the north pole but anyway don't worry uh, I, I got my answer. We, we, we will uh, entertain the, the, the viewers more importantly, okay. right? <laughs> Let's see uh, what is this. Oh, it is a long one. Uh, I don't think my eyes can even screen. Uh. Excuse me, I have one simple question. Can you explain the type of receiver or transmitter antenna used in a satellite? For example, the Boeing uh, satellite earlier or use uh, the antenna reflector in the configuration rather than using a typical dish antenna. Okay, I'm not sure. Uh, what, what's the question here? Type of yeah. receiver you know, use in satellites. Okay, it's actually it differs based on the purpose of mm -hmm. your uh, of your operations. For example, so like for us, it's um, mm -hmm. telecommunications, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The receiver and the antenna, uh, the types usually won't won't matter, but you need to have a the frequency that will be, uh, you know, matching. Uh, okay. To, for the communications, yeah. Okay. All right. Right. Yeah. And, wow, okay, and this one uh, is from Hashreen Core. What has been the more, most challenging part of your job? Wow, too easy, no challenge, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, sorry. I think the challenge, uh, actually, when I first started, I, I found it really challenging for myself because I uh, 
came from, it was like a transition of uh, knowledge from electrical engineering to suddenly working on satellites. It was, it was, mm -hmm. it was a small shock for me. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, but then uh, it's, a, it's a constant learning journey. So I think uh, I enjoyed the challenge actually. Oh, good. All right, that, that, that uh, will help us screen call, uh, you know. Sorry, I, I'm a bit of a joker, so uh, don't mind me. Okay, how do you fix a uh, part that malfunctions or in the satellite? Amar, Pal. How Pai. do we fix? Wow, it's a good question. Okay, because satellites are not like cars. You can't just bring it to the mechanic. <laughs> Correct or not? Yeah, right? that's right. So, um, in case there's a malfunction, um, these parts come with redundancy. Mm -hmm. So we switch to the redundant part when it's a uh, it's a uh, faulty. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. A simple fix like that, right? Oh, okay. Mm. And uh, one question from uh, Anand Jude again: uh, Do stationary satellites orbit above equator? So how can polar regions get uh, continuous satellite connectivity without a fix uh, above the polar region? Oh, okay, I think we were discussing that just now, right? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe a few satellites uh, placed in space because for like geostationary, it would the footprint is quite large on a certain area. Mm -hmm. So like for those like this GPS, they are you know they they cover very uh, small areas. That's why they, up there, there's like you, you need until more than thirty satellites to cover a whole region. Uh, okay, yeah. and this one from Ahmad Tamimi, it says, uh, "Great job, <laughs> okay, thank you." And uh, Afik, Afik has a long one for you. Can you explain uh, the type of uh, receiver transmitter? Oh, I think this is the same one, right? Yeah. Oh, no, it's different. Example being, oh, no, we've done that. And uh, would you like to answer this one? Uh, until when Miasat have a license, would you uh, in a capability to answer this? Uh, is it sensitive or what? Until when Miasat will have the license of orbital location 91.5E? Hmm. I have to ask the legal department of Yasha. No. The thing is that I this question is more like uh why shouldn't we have the license? Because if we if we don't operate on 91.5, even how do you get the footprint on Malaysia? Don't you want signals? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, no, there's a bit of a you know, okay, don't worry, you know, we, we want to make this uh, session uh yeah. fun and uh okay. easy going for everybody, you know. And uh, that's one from uh, uh Ahmad Tamimi it says uh, we really need high-speed internet communication like Starlink, ASAP. Okay, our telco, like telecom always crash. Haha, <laughs> okay, oh, that's not. Okay, quickly move to the next one then. Uh, to save costs and avoid space waste, how does one satellite can be, how one, okay, I'm not sure. How can one satellite can be built? Yeah, would you understand that? Save costs and avoid. Avoid space waste? Do you mean the space debris in space? Perhaps how one, uh, Okay, no, no worries. Sorry, my sweater. Now we don't quite understand. If we want a direct conversation, probably we would. And you know, and uh, we'll just take a short break before we come back with uh, Brel again. Okay. <laughs> well, you are very popular, Brel. You have so many questions, and you know, also get very uh, exhausted. <laughs> and you know. Well, wow, at least, at least it's, you know, it's informative and uh, some people like to know and, uh, you know, some people can learn more from it, you know. But, you know, of course, I have my, uh, you know, my uh, sort of uh, question which I, I like to find out from you. And, you know, uh, how, how do you think or in the end, this will be the last one before we go. Is, uh, we're already running at 49 minutes. How do you think the public, uh, you know, besides SJC uh, can get involved in advancing, you know, uh, our space industry? Because, you know, Space Bio is here. Uh, this is World mm -hmm. Space Week. Uh, we like to think homegrown, like a Malaysian, someone like you who can inspire people. So, you know, if I'm a new student or somebody's working out there, you know, uh, how, how, how do you think uh, I can get involved now? Is there, is there yeah. a way? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very great question. Um, you see, we have, I, I believe that we have a lot of NGOs out there who are, who are you know, led by space enthusiasts like yourself and you know, <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. organizations like Generous Mari, Kapadi Langit. Um, the uh, as cost Malaysia, everyone is doing a great job in educating the public on different different sectors even Cikgu rocket on their rocket oh yes uh, yeah and i think that uh, if uh, 
parents who want to get their children admitted, you know, because as you see, the limit is from 18 to 35, right? So mm -hmm. let's say the child is a 15 and they're interested. I think the best place to start is from these NGOs because there, there are space camps, there are uh, activities by planetarium, you know, by the, 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 the Pusat Science Negara. I think, you know, get your children involved, you know, start them young, like the, um, the saying goes, the Melanchuluh biarlah dari rebunya. Oh, wow, okay, yeah, that's, I, I can't remember that one, but you know, uh, yeah, correct, you know, if you want to to get the kids, uh, mm. you know, that's why I think from SROX, we have programs for kindergarten, you know, to learn uh, mm. pop rockets, and then uh, we go on to uh, basic rocketry modules in primary school, and then going on to advanced uh, solid fuel, yeah. and of course, uh, with efforts like, as you mentioned, Cikgu, Cikgu Rocket from, you know, Perlis, you know, we, we like to drive this movement, and if anybody out there who belongs to an organization, uh, we are Space Bio, uh, we accept volunteers, you know, that's why it's volunteer involving organizations to basically promote uh, the industry further. And uh, before the, we end uh, the session, actually, uh, um, we will run through some of our, our sponsors, uh, you know. We, will that be too commercial? Okay, we have uh, Duo Pharma, Biotech, you know, uh, GoStam, uh, we have Space Hotel and Art Twist. So we'd like to thank them. And... Um, you know, bro, thank you so much uh, for being here tonight. You know, I, we got, you know, I would love to meet you in person one day. Uh, my time is, uh, you know, very uh, limited in care, but definitely uh, have some coffee and, you know, uh, get the chance to talk to you. And I think uh, the viewers itself, uh, you know, they had a, a good uh, opportunity to understand you better and, you know, share some of your wealth of knowledge. So, you know, on behalf of Space Bio, uh, we like to say uh, thank you very much uh, for being our guest speaker. And uh, if there's anything wrong based on our part, technical or anything, uh, we do ap apologize to the viewers. And uh, Brel, anything you want to say to our your fans out there, the viewers? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And uh, okay. I'm looking forward to meet you in person one day. And to the viewers, hopefully it wasn't too technical or confusing. And um, yeah, before I forget, if uh, mm -hmm. you know anyone who is interested, there's I think a um, Missy was having a space up on conference. So you know, if you are a space enthusiast who's not in the STEM, you can join that space up on conference on the Missy's website. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. Um, yeah. We 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 do support our uh, consulting partners also. Missy uh, Malaysia Space Initiative is uh, such a great organization. And a lot of uh, individuals as well as, uh, uh, I think, amazing people in the space industry, uh, you know, under that uh, arm of uh, MISI. And, you know, we do support and make sure, you know, you, sh you show your support for Malaysia's uh, World Space Week, right, Rel? Yeah. Okay, all right. And uh, it's been fun. I hope you had fun, Rel. You know, I had fun. And we hope to I see everyone. Uh, you did? Okay. Oh, thank you. And we hope to see you next time on another session. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Brel. And see you guys next time. And good night. Thank you.